Hello, and welcome to Panther Sports Zone. I'm Worthington Moore. And I'm Iman Abraham. This past Wednesday, the Prairie View A&M men's baseball team took home games one and two of doubleheader action against the vid visiting Jarvis Christian Bulldogs. Our own Caleb Carter has more on that story. Caleb? Thanks, Worthington. It was a good day for baseball as the Panthers tried it out to their home opener against Jarvis Christian. More with this story in this video. PVAMU's baseball team had its home opener this past Wednesday, taking on the Bulldogs of Jarvis Christian in a doubleheader. In the first game, it was too close for comfort as the game stretched an extra two innings, with PV coming away with three runs in the bottom of the ninth to seal the game. The second game of the doubleheader came in a bit less challenging way as the Panthers walked away with a convincing 4-1 win, making this their third win in a row. The Panthers now look to continue their winning ways as they stay at home and take on the Braves of Alcorn State, a weekend that is sure to provide some good baseball. This is Caleb Carter reporting for the Panther Sports Zone. Thanks, Caleb. So this Wednesday, the Lady Panthers took on Lamar Cardinals in Beaumont, Texas in a doubleheader. Unfortunately, PV was unable to take the win, falling 6-1 to one in both matches to their host. A bright spot for Prairie View, Gabriel Leslie defeated her singles opponent by scores of 6-3 and 7-6 in the first match before Victoria Castillo was able to do the same in two sets. After today, the Lady Panthers will take on UTSA and another doubleheader next Sunday, April 3rd in San Antonio, Texas. Currently, the 88th annual PV relays are underway here at Prairie View. Here are some of the early results from day one of the event. In the 1500, PV finished one, two, and three on the men's side, while Devereaux sisters Sydney and Shelby placed first and third in the event. In the 400, Jade Sabir took home second place with a time of 56.42 seconds, while senior Tim Demerit got back into the swing of things, going with a time of 48 point 11 seconds good enough for the third place the nation's number one triple jumper placed first in the long jump event and relon jones took third in the discuss for the men's side and field events the lady panthers were one in three in the pole vault event with Massey guy leading the charge with a vault of 3.35 meters the panthers take on day two of the pva relays tomorrow saturday march 26. Today, the Lady Panthers bowling team begins a SWAC championship where they look to repeat as back-to-back-to-back -back -back champions and earn an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. Make sure to wish them good luck and to cheer them on as they compete in the tournament. The event can be watched on ESPNU and on bowl.tv.com. When we come back, we'll talk about Vox Turo All-American selections and discuss Deion Sanders calling out the NFL. Don't go anywhere after the break. Welcome back to Sports Zone. <clears throat> Starting with baseball honors, this week the Southwestern Athletic Conference has tapped Alabama State's Hunter May and Osvaldo Mendez for SWAC baseball weekly hours for their outstanding performances during this past week of play. May finished the week leading into the Hornets, hitting a 636 in a three game sweep of Florida AM in conference play. He went 7 for 11 at the plate and drove in 10 runs in three game series. May finished with three doubles and a pair of home runs on the weekend while slugging a 1.455 and recording on in a base percentage of 692 against the Rattlers. Mendes came on in relief in Saturday's game and went 5.2 scoreless innings for the Hornets in the win. He did not allow a base runner in picking up the win out of the bullpen and struck out eight batters in the process. 
Now on to some BoxToro All-American selections. This weekend, BoxToro.com announced its 2021-2022 All-American selections for Division I men's college basketball. Seven players from the SWAC were named to first and second teams as Landon Bussey of Alcorn State shared Coach of the Year honors. FAMU's MJ Randolph, Jackson State Javius McKinnis, and Alabama a and M's Jalen Johnson were named to the first team, while BCU's Joe French, Alcorn State's Justin Thomas, UAPB's Sean Williams, and our own Jawan Daniels were named to the second team. Also named the SWAC Player of the Year, Randolph impacted the Florida A&M Rattlers in all aspects of the game this past season, as he led the SWAC in points per game with 18.8, while ranking third in field goal percentage, fourth in assists per game, fourth in seals per game, second in defensive rebounds per game, and fourth in rebounds per game. Randolph scored 30-plus points three times and 20-plus points 14 times while earning SWAC weekly honors five times this season. Head coach for the Alcorn State Braves, Landon Bussey, led his team to a 14-4 overall record in league play this past season, guiding them to a SWAC regular season title and a berth in the NIT tournament. The regular season title marked the first time since 2001-2002 uh, uh, that uh, Alcorn State has won a championship in men's basketball. Now, so recently, Deion Sanders finds himself in the news again, mm -hmm. calling out 10 NFL teams for skipping Juice Use Pro Day. Like, what, what do you think of that situation? Well, um, let, I, I kind of wanted to shift the conversation, like, whenever he first got there, uh, started kind of, like, starting mm -hmm. out with that. Yeah. When, you know, Jackson State first, you know, hired Deion Sanders as coach, it was mm -hmm. kind of that shockwave that, oh, my goodness, he's that guy. Everyone, everyone kind of, like, yeah. knows Deion Sanders. He kind of brought an immediate impact mm -hmm. to the team. And it's something that for all HBCs, all HBCUs mm -hmm. in general benefit, and not just Jackson State. And so by him just being there and his presence, it felt like there would be more spotlight and attention. And knowing that this is Deion Sanders, mm -hmm. like, it, it's not just about him. Like, he's going to he's at Jackson State mm -hmm. for that reason of being able to get his players more spotlight and attention. And that goes to, um, you know, those 10 teams that weren't there. And mm -hmm. 22 teams were there. Right. Um, let's kind of like remember that, but mm -hmm. it's it's not about who showed up. It's more so about who didn't show up, who, you know, would have been mm -hmm. at other, you know, institutions, you know, right. PWIs and would have right. been able to scout their, you know, teams, you know, mm -hmm. players, uh, things like that. And it's not, it's just the fact that there wasn't even one. Right. All it takes is just one person, even if it's kind of like a cursory glance, like, you know, that they're really not going to give them a shot you might be impressed right. by some of the players that are out there and just say, wow, this, this person is really good. And it's, right. it all goes back to giving them a chance and opportunities. Mm -hmm. And for HBCUs, that's really all it comes down to, just giving us that moment to show what we're capable mm -hmm. of because, you know, that media attention that, you know, right. Deion Sanders, when he first got there, it's, it's about bringing more of a spotlight to the student athletes. Now, you and me are both mm -hmm. student athletes and right. just getting that opportunity. Exactly. So, like, being able to just give back and, like, show that there's other athletes mm. that don't go to PWIs but should have the opportunity to have that attention. And it's like yeah. it really kind of gives that question of what message are they, sh are they trying to send by not showing up or, like, not being there, you know, because you should be able to support all athletes, not yep. just the ones that go to PWIs. Yep. It's about being able to show that there are great athletes that come to HBCUs. They come to HBCUs for the experience, to be able to be around the culture, be around the, fam the HBCU ex experience, literally. Mm. And not only is it unfair, I feel like, two athletes that come here to get that HBCU experience, but mm. also play the sport that they love, they should still be getting the same attention as PWIs as well. Yeah, and uh, one of the teams, it's a, a team that I root for, a uh, team that I consider to be the, you know, hometown team, Houston yeah. Texans. Uh, they're one of the teams that weren't there. Right. And one of the things that I find interesting, interesting connection there is that I remember a few years ago, I was mm -hmm. um, talking to a teammate about how, mm -hmm. you know, there hadn't been any HBCU players been selected in the first round. And then, you know, the Houston Texans, I believe it was either in 2019 or 2020, or just sometime within the past few years, they mm -hmm. selected um, a player, offensive tackle mm -hmm. from Alabama State, you know, one of the schools within the SWAC. Right. They selected Titus Howard um, in the first round. It's like you can give, you know, that player an opportunity and a chance. And obviously he was one of the mm -hmm. nation's, you know, leading uh, tackles, and that's why they chose him. But it's, it's just fascinating how 
a team, an organization would, you know, draft someone from a historically black college institution and then, you know, see like within the next few years that, mm -hmm. you know, not only are no uh, HBCU products taken in the first round, but um, just last draft uh, mm -hmm. in the NFL, no HBCU talents were even taken, right. it seems, um, in like any of the rounds. So. Um, mm -hmm. It just goes to show that discrepancy in that right. if you give people a chance and just a shot to be able to mm -hmm. blossom and just be able to show off their talents, you have no idea what can possibly happen exactly. out of that. Exactly. And, it, and it's not fair that the talents aren't shared mm -hmm. and they should have a voice, they should have a platform, they should be able to show off their talent. And yeah. they had the opportunity to do that and it just sucks that there was no support or as much, as much support as expected there to have been because why not support athletes because the only difference is the school that they decided to attend at yeah. the end of the day they're all athletes they all could have they all had i'm sure choices yeah but just because of the institution or the college that they picked the program that they decided to go to they don't get the same exposure as somebody else yeah is it's not fair and I, I agree with that with the, what you have to say yeah and just one last thing i want to say mm -hmm. before we go to break yeah is that whole point on exposure Mm -hmm. which is one of the things that brings in more profits and resources. It, it's mm -hmm. a cycle. Right. Um, the more attention that you have on your program, the more, you know, top talents that you're able to bring mm -hmm. in, and the more that can help your program bring in more resus resources, you know, so on and so on. It's, right. it's, a, it's a cycle that helps itself, and I, I'm glad that, you know, mm -hmm. we have people out there like Deion Sanders mm -hmm. just to be able to, you know, put on that pressure because right. no one's going to give you anything by mm -hmm. saying nothing. So you have to be that voice for yourself and call out these teams, you right. know, say, hey, there could at least been one person. And I, I remember what he said in that video, where mm -hmm. art thou? Now, I'm <laughs> not going to get, you know, too flowery with right. my languages, but uh, these uh, teams, these, uh, you know, professional mm -hmm. teams, they definitely need to be there. Not just for, um, not just for football, not just for the NFL, but just in any professional um, sports right. um, at all. So whether that's baseball, whether that's basketball, maybe even mm -hmm. soccer. Yeah. Um, Golf. <laughs> <laughs> Whether that be golf, you know, just yeah. to be able to give us that spotlight, that attention to be able to showcase yeah. our products and our talents and everything like that. But, I agree. Um, Especially yeah. with media being such a big thing nowadays, mm -hmm. everything is popular on social media. So being able to go out there and post, you can find athletes anywhere just mm -hmm. by looking at their social media accounts. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's great. And thank you guys. We'll be right back. Um, we're going to go to commercial. Welcome back to Panther Sports Zone. Joining us today, we have the lovely Miss Taylor Harvey. Taylor, how are you doing today? I'm good, Worthington. Thank you for having me. Thank yes, you for joining for us and being here. Um, so, Iman, obviously, you're a student out there. You're on the golf mm -hmm. team. Taylor, you're yes. on the golf team. Um, but this is obviously your interview, your time. <laughs> I just wanted to ask you, what would you say is the hardest aspect of being a student athlete? Um, I would say persevering through unmotivation. Um, I feel like it's so easy to just not want to go to class, not want to eat right, not want to go to the gym, but I feel like that's the reason that we're here because we can do that and just making sure that we get what we need to do done. Mm. Especially with everything going on with the whole golf situation, golf yeah. program, I feel like it definitely is important to remember your why. And exactly. what is your reasoning to come to Prayer View? Speaking of wise. Um, so if you caught me last year, I would say um, Coach Jennings, and I would say that a lot of our teammates would say the same exact thing. Um, he really did a great job just building connections with us, but unfortunately he has resigned. So um, that void has kind of been felt throughout the whole team, but yeah. 
Okay. And then what makes you want to continue to play? Um, I do see a lot of improvement within the team, um, especially going through what we have throughout the season without having a person to support us. Um, there's a lot of potential there, and I do feel like our women's team has done a lot so far. All right. Um, so I, as a person, um, <laughs> I, I don't really know a lot necessarily about golf. My grandfather golf, but that's where it kind of is. I know the yeah. overs, the unders. The only experience I have with golf is we golf. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. that's very um, accurate. So for a person like me and like for anyone else in the, out in the audience who may not have as much experience with golf, how does a, uh, how does the format of a general tournament uh, work out? Okay, yeah, so typically on Saturday we leave campus. Um, Sunday we get to the course, have our practice rounds, usually 18 holes, um, if we're lucky, in a cart. Uh, <laughs> but Monday we have the start of our 36-hole day tournament. Um, Iman knows mm -hmm. how that goes. It's tiring, it's brutal, but it's all worth it. And then Tuesday we have our um, third round. It's full of 18 holes again, and then we get food and drive on back to campus. Yeah, just one more quick question. It's so those 18 holes, like uh, on on day one, I think you said you know 36 holes. Are, mm -hmm. Is that the same? That's the same course. That's the yeah. same. Yeah, same gotcha, holes, okay, everything. <laughs> gotcha. Yes. It wouldn't make much sense to just like oh let's play at one, uh, ter uh, no, you yeah. know play at one golf <laughs> course and let's go to another one. No, okay. exactly. Yeah, yeah no, there's not enough time for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we go sun up, sun down. Exactly. And play 18, then just go wrap around, do it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, but so thinking of. Um, tournament styles and everything. So how does it feel knowing that SWAC is coming up in three weeks, yeah. but currently you guys are short tournament for SWAC. So how does that kind of make you feel preparing for SWAC? Um, it's obviously a challenge. I know that admin is doing the best that they can. Um, our, I guess, unofficial interim CJ, he has scheduled a dual match with TSU for mm -hmm. us to play in. Uh, I believe that's coming up this next Wednesday, so mm -hmm. if people want to come out and support, we'd love that. Um, but yeah, it is a little disheartening knowing that we don't have as much, I guess, time mm -hmm. to practice and mm -hmm. be ready, but I feel like it's just another mental hurdle that we can overcome as a team and we'll right. all push each other. Yeah, I agree. Mm, nice. Um, so kind of want to go into my next question. You know, everyone mm -hmm. has a different sort of reason for like why they kind of like start doing out something, mm -hmm. you know, for student athletes, uh, like shoot, we're all student athletes on here. I just <laughs> uh, figured that out. But for everyone, it's kind of like someone kind of pushes you to be that person that starts doing something new yeah. and like something that you've been doing obviously for a very long time. So I wanted to ask who was that person for you in your life who influenced you to play golf? Uh, that was definitely my dad. Uh, he got tickets to the Waste Management Phoenix Open when I was around eight. Um, we passed by a booth in the tent. It was called the First Tee. It's been a wrap ever since, couldn't get me off the golf course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely my dad, and he's probably the reason why. Him and my mom are probably the reason why I still play to this day. Nice. Yeah. And coming to PV, so, you know, playing golf at first tee and then playing, what made you want to come play at the collegiate level? Um, I feel like it's always just been a goal of mine since mm -hmm. I was a young girl. So the fact that I'm here, being able to call myself a D1 collegiate athlete, mm -hmm. um, it really makes me happy. Um, yeah. I accomplished one of the goals that I've had since I was a kid. So, yeah, it's amazing. And yeah. to be able to do this mm -hmm. here right. with the teammates that I have, I feel like we can get the job done with SWAC this year. Yeah, and then do you see yourself going past being a collegiate golfer, maybe going pro after college? Um, so I personally like to write. Uh, <laughs> I do love golf as well, but I feel like if I can intertwine those two together, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. if my game takes me to uh, LPGA, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be more than happy to do it. <laughs> yeah, and kind of like speaking on L, uh, LPGA, um, do you kind of like find anyone um, out there that you kind of like look up to or kind of like find out as a major influence or someone that you kind of not to say model your game after <laughs> like how do you model your game after four <laughs> you know how do you like but is there anyone that you kind of like follow and like just see how they do things around yeah um i would say probably nelly corda uh she was the olympian this past um olympics and then lydia ko uh, i definitely loved watching her play whenever they'd come out to phoenix um oh, yeah. 
Yeah, they're great golfers, great people to look up to, and they do inspire me to continue persevering through tough times. Yeah. Nice. And then when you're getting ready for a tournament, is there any mental prep or physical prep that you like to do to get ready? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to hydrate. Um, <laughs> I have a habit of not drinking enough water, as a lot of people probably <laughs> struggle with. Um, but definitely eating right, just preparing myself. Uh, I also like to read my Bible to kind of calm mm -hmm. my mind and just remember that it's not me, it's him. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I like to do. That's good. <laughs> okay, so one of the questions that I literally have right out here was <laughs> going to basically say, like, what are some challenges, you know, what are some teams that are out there in SWAC that present challenges, but, you know, I was able to talk to mm -hmm. Iman and yeah. kind of like see that there's only like two other teams basically mm -hmm. that are playing Texas Southern, Alabama State. So I wanted to ask, what's it like basically playing, you know, seeing them in basically all the tournaments that you play and like going on and against some like repetitive times yeah um i feel like it definitely lights a fire in me um seeing the same girls that mm -hmm. i mean i feel like i if i get my game right i can beat everybody but mm -hmm. i feel like that's just the mentality that you have to have as a collegiate mm -hmm. athlete um but i want to beat them mm -hmm. all of us yeah. want to <laughs> beat them and i feel like we are definitely trying to gear towards just getting the job done, getting swag. Yeah, and I feel like it's a good thing that we like to remember that it's not necessarily like us just trying to, it's like we know, like yeah, it's competition, but at the end of the day, we know as a team, if we do what we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. we're gonna end up at, on the top. Like exactly. it's more of a, yeah. like we have, they're out there playing their game, but it's an individual sport at the end mm -hmm. of the day, and we know we have a great game. So exactly. it's like being able to just be out there and. <laughs> You know, put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But for that, like, not even that, but also, do you think that there will be more turn? Like, if you do, you hope that the conference would be bigger, that they have more competition other than just two other teams? Yeah, um, I feel like as we, as golfers within our conference, continue mm -hmm. to get better, mm -hmm. more competition will show itself, and it'll just be more people to play against and just mm -hmm. kind of, I guess level each other out, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah. like Iman mm -hmm. said, it's really up to you. It's the work that you put in and the results will show. Yeah, okay. sure. Um, kind of like going with that question that I asked you, uh, the last question that I asked you, are there any like specific people like on those teams, like on Alabama State or Texas Southern that you kind of like say, ah, next time, I'll, I might not have gotten you today, but, but next time, like are there Taylor any like has specific gotten close. people? Yeah. <laughs> all right, um, all right. <laughs> So one of the girls on TSU, uh, probably the number one player, Rev, uh, I actually played in a junior world tournament with her when I was like 11 or 12. So I've known nice. her for a long time. Uh, I've gone her a few times, but she's definitely gone me. <laughs> but I'm putting an end to that. No, I want to win. So. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. her last season. So. Yeah, exactly. And talk about a small world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. The golf community is a very knit no, group. From like Especially Arizona women. to mm -hmm. the Philippines, like that's who would have known in Houston, Texas, we'd reunite. But, yeah. <laughs> The rivals are back at it. Yeah. <laughs> All this rivalry. Wow. I didn't know that golf could get so intense. No, right. I just thought it was just four. <laughs> that's the only that's the only action. That, that's all I got in my repertoire. Yeah, hey, no. your Wii golf form is pretty good. I like it. My Wii golf form is excellent. You know, it it gets me that um under eighteen no, that's not possible. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but anyways, um, under par, under par is the goal. Yeah, exactly. under par. Okay, so that's that's okay. Yes. That's a lingo. Yeah, so seven, 72 or or lower yeah. is the goal. But also, you also are excited for you know you have three years left because of you know you got a year off and mm -hmm. you also have extra year because of COVID. Yeah. So you actually do have quite a lot bit more time to play considering you only played one year last year. Yeah. So for this new coach coming in, is there anything that that you're looking forward to or anything that you like from Coach Jennings that you hope to see in the new coach? Um, I'd like to see hmm, just that he wants to see us improve, not mm -hmm. only on the golf course, but as people. One of the things that I really liked about Coach Jennings is that he saw the best in everybody and he wanted them to put their best foot forward in everything that they do. Um, so mm -hmm. just being very, I guess, supportive of yeah. our team, especially going through a period where we haven't felt that for the past two semesters now <laughs> without having a coach. So it's yes. been very difficult, but if we can get that with this new coach, I think a lot of us will be very happy. 
Yes. You know, a lot of um, a lot of travel um, goes into golf, and I wanted to ask if that plays any um, if that factors into uh, playing golf and you know going and competing in these tournaments. For sure, um, I feel like it's very mentally draining and physically draining. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I really can't complain. We get to travel. We get to eat free food, I guess, play beautiful courses. So it's really a privilege, and I'm very grateful that we all get to experience it. Yeah, and then yeah. what about the, you know, when you do return, ah. you know, you got to, you know, work, 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 work. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, the Homework. day after tournaments, yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> Having to get up at, like, 8. I mean, it's not even that bad, but um, just having to go to class despite being jet lagged or just beyond tired, it is hard, but I feel like at the end of the day, like, it's only making you better and just preparing you for the actual real world. So, yeah, it's nice. nice. I agree. I feel like it is. It's, it's hard for sure, mm -hmm. but it's also, we came here for that. Exactly. Yes. Like, this is what we signed up for. It's probably in the contract somewhere, but yeah. You know. You probably should read those. No facts. Nice. Um, I think maybe Mon, you already asked, kind of like asked, you know, Taylor this, but I wanted to, you know, specifically touch on, like, if not, you know, going pro, uh, what specifically do you kind of like want to do after college? Okay, yeah. Um, so, like I mentioned before, I really like writing um, so much so to the fact that I came up with my own blogging website. So nice. it's called Taylor Harvey Made Golf. If y'all want to check that yes. out. Um, I really just want to share like my passion for golf and also my passion for Jesus as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel like before I used to want to write for Golf Digest, which I'd still love to do, but I feel like I want to be my own boss and kind of do my own thing and kind of let that take me where it leads me. Exactly. So please go support Taylor's blog, okay? Thank you. <laughs> we support our own Panthers around here. Exactly. Sports, so. <laughs> you have to support our own Panthers. And just mm -hmm. this last question for me. I don't know, Amon, if you might have another question. You're good. But last question for me that I mm -hmm. wanted to ask is, um, you know, we've had a lot of several, you know, we've had student athletes on here before. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask what kind of, like, makes golf, like, different from, like, you know, other, you know, student athletes and like what they might have to go through. Okay, yeah. Um, so as y'all may or may not know, golf does not have a facility on campus. So yes. we do have to travel, spend money out of our own pockets just to get better, um, to bring home trophies for this school. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we don't have a coach, so <laughs> it, it's very hard to kind of just motivate yourself and drive to the golf course, really work on your own game, especially when you don't have someone that's guiding you to do things that you need to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I would say that despite all of that, our team has done a really great job of getting what we need to do done. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like, like I've said before, the work will show itself. <laughs> and. I'm just very proud of all of this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you for coming on here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for having so me. Thank you so much for being on here. I feel, yes. I, I feel as if, you know, with Coach's Corner earlier today mm -hmm. at 3 from 3.30. Yes. Today, Check that out on every Friday. Monday, Wednesday, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 30, Friday. Sorry, quick plug. Um, I feel like we, you know, double dib with uh, golf. But mm -hmm. it was good to get them both the men's side and both your side as yeah. well as the women's too. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having yes. me. I really enjoyed my time uh, with both of y'all. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. I learned so much today I'm about golf. Yes. Hey, your I wee golf score is watching. Is watching I and learning. I, I don't think I have a wee anymore. <laughs> oh, I, gosh. I don't know where it is. Hey, Top Golf. Hey, Top Golf. Yes, Top <laughs> Golf. Everyone says it's no. a lovely place. Everyone says it's a lovely place. It's the food like, is. Again as well so <laughs> yes you can have fun out there for sure exactly. but yes yeah, so hopefully everybody watching you heard it here first <laughs> from one of our very own golfers here and thank you for watching and please tune in monday wednesday friday 5 30 every every monday wednesday friday so thank you for coming and this is panther spawn this is amimon abraham i'm worthington moore and we are signing out <laughs>